Let's check our Chronicle inbox from uh, Vallejo. Paul writes in, I know it's spring, but I'm fired up for football season already. We all are. Both the Bears and the Cardinal should compete for a Pac-10 title this season. I, I sure hope this is the year when we see USC fall from the pedestal of Pac-10 champions. And good timing, because we have in studio tonight, we are honored to have as our Chronicle conversation, the two-time Pac-10 coach of the year. He's been at Cal for seven glorious years, six bowl appearances. Jeff Tedford joins us in studio on Chronicle Live. Hey, Coach, how are you? How are you doing, Greg? And you know, this guy, I think, alongside, Rusty Simmons is here as well. He covers the Bears for the uh, San Francisco Chronicle to help Joe Morgan and I. Joe wanted to fan. jump in here. He's just a huge a football fan, yeah. huge football fan. Just a fan. So what goes on now? You just had spring practice a few weeks ago. You got a few months to go before training camp starts in August, but you guys never rest, do you? We don't. We're really rec uh, concentrating on recruiting right now. The staff's out on the road, and then uh, finals right now for our kids. Two days ago was the last day of class, and so our guys are starting finals right now and, and preparing for that and hopefully finish up strong academically. And everything I read going into the season has you uh, clearly a top-20 team, and I, I want to get right to the heart of the matter here and talk about the quarterback situation. Uh, Kevin Riley, who kind of shared the job last year with Nate Longshore's in the mix. You also have the sophomore, Brock Mansion. You have Bo Sweeney, an intriguing name from your Fresno State roots as a freshman coming in. What did you learn from those three young guys when you had them during spring practice? Just the uh, level of competition. You know, that um, all three of them, highly competitive, smart guys. Uh, it was great to see um, to Brock and Bo to be able to get in there and kind of take some reps with the number one unit. So we we could see what they can do and so Kevin's Kevin's done a nice job and and uh, so now Brock's moving up and, and Bo's moving up and so it's going to be highly competitive through the summer and fall camp. Coach, I think the majority of the emails I get from readers are about the quarterbacks, but right behind that is Javid Best. Uh, can you update us on, on his health and how he's feeling right now? Yeah, he's, he's doing really well. Um, he had his elbow operate on his foot, and, and um, he's rehabbed very well. Uh, he's running, and he'll be full speed for camp, and uh, we're excited to see that, obviously. Mm -hmm. 1,580 yards. In fact, nobody returning to college football gained more yards last year than the, than job at best. And, you know, people think of you as a quarterback guru, uh, guru and you like to, to throw the football. But every time you and I get together for a meeting before a game, you talk about pounding the rock and running the football. And you've always had a good stable of running backs at Cal. Yeah, we have. We've been very fortunate. And Coach Gould, our running back coach, does an excellent job in, in preparing those guys. And, and we've had either the, the league's leading rusher or right there, you know, and, and uh, the all-conference back so we've been very fortunate and and we want to stay balanced on offense there's no doubt about it you know that that we need to be able to run the football it's situ it's a situational game and to be able to run the football when it counts is really important and you've had great backs jj errington uh, adam chinobi echimandu great marshawn lynch starting in the nfl and and job at best and uh, shane vereen had a very nice year for you as well last year i, I do want to get into the concept of play calling because i know joe's fascinated by this as yeah. well i'm just fascinated by the art of calling plays in football and we see you with that huge play sheet that you've got on the <laughs> sideline but uh you know a few years ago you brought in coach mike dunbar to help you call the plays and you've kind of backed off a little bit uh, from that as far as calling every single play where are you right now as far as calling plays for this coming year yeah back in the back joe's the uh, armchair <laughs> quarterback back there questioning the play calling Go deep! Go deep! <laughs> <laughs> but uh uh you know i've i've turned that over i've kind of gone back and forth with it in the beginning here I called every play and uh, have kind of have kind of relegated that to uh, to the offensive coordinators. Andy Ludwig is our is our offensive coordinator right now, and he will call most of the plays. I'll throw one in every now and then uh, when I feel like um, like it's needed. But uh, you know, I think you need to give the play caller uh, the flexibility and the freedom to set plays up because I think that's most of play calling is setting. Talk plays about up. that for a minute. What do you mean set a play up? How do you well, do that? I think you have to stay one play ahead. You know, so if it's first down, you have to anticipate what's going to happen. If it is a second, short, medium, or long you know and have something ready to go and football is such a situational game and and so you know that's that big card we were talking about Joe yeah. of, of where that stuff's located on that card you know as soon as you get to that situation you need to find that and then you have you pretty much know in your mind what you want to call in those situations you spend so much time during the week of preparation that when you get to that situation you pretty much know what you want to call but now you got to find it on the card and, and it's just really a reminder for you that card well you know I've talked to to some other coaches and you're saying that you're letting the play calling go so you can be a head coach I, I always wonder how you can be both how you can actually 
call a play while trying to manage the yeah, game yeah. and manage your offense. How you see an offensive lineman move or seeing if you're not, you know, calling the plays. You can see more. It just seems you can see more if you're not worried about the next play, like you said, two plays ahead. That's exactly why I've given it up, is because yeah. I, I really believe that for me to be what I need to be as a head coach, right. that I need to give that up. And only situational every now and then throw one in there. But I need to be able to, to you know, call a penalty, you know, accept a penalty, decline a penalty, whatever it may be, uh, make certain calls in a game uh, on, on the situation of the game and so uh, I had to give it up because I couldn't do both I you know calling calling plays in a game you have to be 100% focused on what you're doing and I found trying to do both um, was very difficult to do for me coach let's let's go back to what, what Paul and Vallejo uh, wrote in to start I mean USC obviously is one of the great programs in college football they've been for a long time and they happen to be in your conference but they lost their quarterback in the offseason he's now in the National Football League uh, how do you see this Pac-10 flushing out? They're obviously the team to beat, but do you feel like you guys have closed the gap a little bit with them? I think so. I, I think every time we play USC, it's a very competitive game uh, within one score. And, um, you know, so we get them early in the year. We get them at home this year, and hopefully we can catch them when they're still a little bit young in certain uh, positions. And uh, I know our fans are going to come out, and it's going to be a great football game. October and, uh, the 3rd. As it always is. Yeah. I, I wondered about that, Coach. You start off with four of your first five teams are going to be really competitive games do you like that early on in the season or, or would you prefer those to be backloaded well I like it to be balanced yeah, to tell you the yeah. truth and and when you look at um, you know you have Maryland and Minnesota and Oregon and USC that's for your first five games those are pretty tough opponents and so you, you just hope that you can get through that stretch healthy ready to go for for the remainder of the season because we have a bye after that and so hopefully we can stay healthy through that this next question is probably one you can't even answer but but do you monitor what's going on with the USC athletic program the new you know, the last couple of days about O.J. Mayo and, and Coach Floyd and the ongoing investigation involving Reggie Bush maybe getting proper benefits from a sports marketing agent because indirectly that, that could affect how you guys do once the season starts. Uh, do, you, do you keep uh, apprised of what's going on with that situation? Not that really, news? Greg. Some people, you know, keep me informed of what's happening, but I can't control that, and it really has no effect right now on our preparation and, and what we're getting ready to do. So, uh, you know, that thing will play itself out, and, and uh, you know, we'll just worry about ourselves. Let me ask you about Alex Mack. We had Alex in, I think, the first couple of weeks, and Rusty was here to help us interview. The first couple of weeks we were on the air, uh, I think it was the Wednesday before the NFL draft. We were all hoping he'd go in the first round. We didn't envision Cleveland kept trading back. They wound up with a 21st overall pick, and, and your center was chosen 21st overall, which is unheard of. Yeah, that's uh, so proud of Alex and happy for him. You know, he could have came out after his junior year, and, and to see a guy come back for all the right reasons, to provide the leadership that, that he provided, Provided our team uh, to graduate. Uh, he won the Dratty Award. Um, you know, he was the Morris Trophy winner again for the second time. But everything he meant to our program was all good. And so I, I am so happy for him and that he's going to get a great opportunity to play in the NFL. And he went so high. And you just have to be happy for those guys who choose to come back to college for their senior year for all the right reasons. Absolutely. He's a good young man. Let's jump over to defense. Since you are coaching the entire football team, we should mention the other side of the ball a little bit. You guys you guys were great, I thought, on defense a year ago. You've lost a few people. Your linebacking core is going to change, but you guys should be pretty strong on defense this year. We should. Our, our defensive front is back, and our whole secondary is back. And so, uh, and we have our linebackers. Some of our linebackers played quite a bit last year. Eddie Young started mm -hmm. our outside linebacker. Mike Muhammad, uh, DJ Holt, uh, Michael Kendricks, all those guys played last year. And so they're not completely new. And uh, Coach Gregory, actually, our defensive coordinator, I, I turned the reins over to him with that. I have 100% trust and confidence and what he's doing with with our defensive staff and he's done a phenomenal job of putting our players in a position to be successful I'll start September the 5th and this year you got Maryland coming to your place and you don't have to kick off at 9 o'clock in the morning so I know you're going to get uh, coach Friesen this year did, did uh, you get a cell number when you can call him at a game yeah say, I, was, uh, I was hoping to run that toss to best <laughs> it, again it just worked run it again <laughs> keep running it join the other 70,000 fans yeah. <laughs> they, they, all, they all want his telephone number coach thank you so much for your insights we wish you the very best of luck. Thank you, Greg. Appreciate One it. One of the very best. He has turned this program around incredibly. Think of where he was before he arrived and where they are now. Rusty, thanks for your time as well. We're going to come back and we're going to turn to the back page. We'll talk a little NBA basketball with our NBA expert, <laughs> Joe Morgan. <laughs>